In most societies for most of history, women have earned lower incomes than men. That fact is not in dispute. What is open to question, and what has generated many fallacies, have been various attempts to explain this fact. Plausible possibilities are many. Employers might discriminate against women. Parents might raise girls and boys differently. Women and men might have different skills or make different choices in education or careers. These and other possibilities are often collapsed into one prevailing conclusion. When and where there are significant differences between women and men in their employment, pay, or promotion, discrimination can be inferred, and where there has been a lessening of such disparities over time, it has been due to a lessening of discrimination under the pressures of government, the feminist movement, or a general increase in enlightenment. Such reasoning has been common from the media to the political arena to courts of law, but this explanation cannot withstand a scrutiny of history or of economics. It is one of the central fallacies of our time. History There is no question that the sexes have often been treated differently from childhood on. In some societies, girls have not been educated as often or to the same extent as boys, so that in such societies, women on average are less qualified to hold jobs requiring education. Such societies, in effect, throw away much of the economic and other potential of half their population. Such discrimination on the part of those controlling the education of children obviously produces income differences between adult females and adult males, even if employers do not discriminate among comparable workers, because women and men end up with different levels and kinds of knowledge, skills, and work experience. Few societies today have such severe restrictions on the education of girls, at least not in the Western world. But whether or to what degree employer discrimination exists or can explain much of the male-female income differences is a question rather than a foregone conclusion. Because, for whatever reasons, differences in job qualifications between women and men have often been demonstrable and substantial. Moreover, these differences have changed over time, so that a lessening of income disparities between the sexes cannot be automatically attributed to a lessening of employer discrimination when it may also be due to a lessening of differences in education, job experience, or availability to work outside the home. These are all questions that require empirical evidence rather than blanket assumption. Even in the 21st century, two-thirds of the world's illiterate adults are women, according to The Economist magazine. However, at the other end of the educational spectrum, women in the most industrially advanced countries are going on to higher education in numbers comparable to men, and in some countries, more often than men. In Japan, there are 90 women enrolled in higher education for every 100 men. In the United States, 140 women for every 100 men. And in Sweden, 150 women for every 100 men. Nor is such predominance of women purely quantitative. In 2006, the New York Times reported, at elite institutions like Harvard, small liberal arts colleges like Dickinson, huge public universities like the University of Wisconsin and UCLA, and smaller ones like Florida Atlantic University, women are walking off with a disproportionate share of the honors degrees. But these are developments in relatively recent times. Among the other factors in differences between male and female incomes have been differences between women and men in physical strength, a factor once very important during the long eras of history when most people in most countries worked in agriculture or in other occupations requiring much physical strength, such as mining, shipping, or metallurgy.
The replacement of human muscle by machine power in our own times has so reduced the importance of physical strength that it may be difficult today to imagine how important that factor was in centuries past.